Hello all, welcome to the channel. This is a PSA for Nikon owners. You might want to check for a firmware update for your lenses and cameras. Next, Adobe has added support for the Nikon Z8 pixel shift feature, but left support for this feature in the shadows. Fujifilm had their Egg Summit in Tokyo and introduced a new camera, the Fujifilm X106, and new firmware upgrades for existing cameras. Find out what amazed me the most about the buzz around the Fujifilm X106. And this latest rumor from Canon about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II is about what? You just have to wait to find the answers to these questions and more in this photo news brief. Welcome, my name is Vaughn. It's been an exciting month for Nikon and Fujifilm. Nikon released firmware update for the Z8 in the second week of February. I created a video for the Nikon community so you could benefit. Now Nikon has shown a pre-release version of a firmware update for the Nikon ZFC at the CP Plus show. And let's do a quick overview. This update will do the following. It will add a different info screen opening with multiple random patterns and color options for the info screen to match the external camera colors. There will be an addition of startup opening animations. When this feature is enabled, a random startup animation is displayed. The exact number of animations available was not disclosed at this time. Also, you will have changeable background colors for the info screen. Users can now select background colors for the info screen with 12 colors available, seemingly to match the color variations of the ZFC. Also, you will get that red frame display during video recording that Nikon's adapting. This feature is the same as the one equipped in the Z30. Nikon couldn't have timed this update better. I heard that the Fujifilm X106 is overwhelming Fujifilm with pre-orders. Let's count, that's 440,000 for the silver body and 130,000 for the black body. That's a <laughs> pre-sales. On to Adobe. Adobe has added support for the new Nikon Z8 pixel shift feature. I wanna see a show of the hands of all those pixel shift users out there. Plus, Adobe added lens supports for these Viltrox lenses. The Viltrox AF 20mm 2.8Z the Viltrox AF 27mm f 1.2Z and the Viltrox AF 28mm f 1.8Z. I want a few Viltrox lenses, by the way. I love a cheap thrill too. But this one thing has me all flustered. Where is the support for the Nikon in raw Kodak? What's going on Adobe? I keep looking for signs of its release on the Adobe community site and I'm still not seeing it. DaVinci Resolve has, so why doesn't Adobe have it? I guess I had to keep buying more memory cards for those enormous ProRes files. Man, camera stuff gets expensive. Please leave those comments about these updates and subscribe and hit that like button so you get the latest Nikon news and more. Next, if you're Fujifilm users, count me in. I own an X-H2S. That rolls off the tongue. Now, Fujifilm has announced the X-106 at the X Summit in Tokyo, Japan. I'll go over some quick specs. The X-106 will have a 40.2 megapixel APS-C X trans sensor. It's 40 megapixel. The X105 had a 26 megapixel sensor, which was good in low light. The 40 megapixel sensor will give you more detail, but it's worse for video. The X processor 5 processor is impressive for the video capabilities packed in such a small camera. This camera does 10 bit recordings at 4K, 6.2K capture from a 1.3X crop region and sub-sample 4K at up to 30 pixels from the sensor's full width or at up to 60 pixels with a 1.4 crop. Throw in the improved subject recognition and no, it's not still on par with Canon or Sony. The lens will be a Fujinon 
23 millimeter F2 lens, same lens as the previous model, the 105. It's a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. It will have six stops of in-body stabilization that X105 didn't have IBS. So you're gaining something. It will have a 425 point intelligent hybrid autofocus system. The hybrid system is 0.6088 times OVF with a 3.69 millimeter dot OLED EF. And it is touchscreen. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. And it has 20 film simulation modes with a Rilla Ace. That's impressive. Looks like Fujifilm has a winner on its hand. My favorite part about this camera is this comparison cutout of both the X105 and the 6. I guess the techies needed to know how thick their camera was. I have a thick skull too. Now, don't feel left out if you own Fujifilm's other mirrorless cameras. They have plans to release Fujifilm updates for the existing X series 5th generation cameras. The X2S, the X-H2 are getting red frame indicators to show active video recordings. The X-H2S, the HS2, the T5, and the S20 will have improved subject detection autofocus performance when using the electronic shutter. Also, you will gain touch subject tracking with the X-H2S and the H2 and the T5 and the S20. So don't get mad at me and leave those comments if the subject detection at least hadn't elevated itself to at least Nikon. These updates will arrive in the spring. Wait, there's more. Fujifilm will introduce the Rilla Ace film simulation to the X2S, the H2, the T5, and the S20. Plus, if you're interested in using the X app, Fujifilm revealed that the X Summit, it's getting a major revamp. Yay! Here are some quick hits. Improvement to activity page, new filter view to show only the images taken with each camera, uh, live background downloads of firmware updates, renewed activity page, and it'll show the equipment page. Wow, Fujifilm is adding value to owning a Fujifilm camera. Please subscribe that you can keep up with these trending topics from Fujifilm. Finally, the rumored site Canon Watch has stated that the rumored Canon EOS R5 Mark II will feature artificial intelligence. I thought all cameras had artificial intelligence. The AI may be used to track faces better and predict movements faster. If it's anything like the Karen AI, maybe it will enhance scenes or even digitally retouch skin tones. So in each new generation, the AI is improving and these features are meant to sell cameras. That's it for this photo news brief. Please subscribe and hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you.